Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. Today, we have with us Hyla from Crafty and Carnivorage. Say hello to everyone there, Hyla. Hello everyone. So one of the main things that everybody always wants to ask, and I am no different, how did you get started? on your carnivore journey? What what made you decide to, to try this thing? Dr. Barry. <laughs> Isn't that the answer for everybody? No. Um, honestly, I wasn't looking for it, but I just happened across some of his videos. I think I found Dr. Burke first. Uh, I think I was, I was watching like some exercise videos or something about, I don't remember exactly what, but then it turned into keto. And then I started seeing um, Dr. Barry and then carnivore. And I just started binge watching his uh, old live streams. And um, he made carnivore sound so easy. <laughs> and keto sounded so hard to me because everybody that I watched or everything that I was reading and watching was like macros, this macros, that. And I was like, I, I can't do something like that. I can't do something where I'm having to keep track of a whole bunch of stuff. And Dr. Barry's like, just eat when you're till you're stuffed and eat when you're hungry. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I can do that. I can try that for 90 days. So that's what I did. I, I said, I can do that for 90 days. I'll try it for 90 days and see how I feel. Good. Um, so you have a family, uh, yes. I hear you talk quite a bit about your kids, but I don't know how many you have and how old they are. I have three kids. One is out of the house, still in college. Uh, another one is an adult, but still lives with us. Barely an adult, but, um, and then a teenage girl. So my two oldest are boys and then my youngest is a daughter and she's, she's a sophomore. Okay. Okay, and I also hear you talking about your chickens, and you get eggs from your chickens, so yes. you must live out in the country. Do you have other animals besides the chickens, or are they your only animal? We have three dogs, <laughs> which are like having toddlers. I call them four-legged furry toddlers. <laughs> they are a mess, but yeah, we've got five chickens and three dogs. Okay. We live out in the country, but we're in a neighborhood too. We're, we're on an acre or so. There's okay. no rules about what, you know, what you can have and stuff like that. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, one of the things, as you know, I talk about quite often on my channel is having your why in front of you so that you know why you're doing it and that helps you stick to it. Mm -hmm. Do you mind talking about your why? Why do you continue to do this? Sure. So um, my biggest concern and why is diabetes. Um, I don't have diabetes. I hadn't. I always get my blood work done. Sorry, I need to silence that. Um, you know, I always get my blood work done and I always tell the doctor I'm, I'm concerned about diabetes because it runs in the family. Oh, you're good. You're good. You're good. But it's just always been there and it's always been like this nagging thing in my head because my dad died in his thirties from diabetes and didn't know that he had diabetes. So it's always there, you know, just always nagging at me and my body type and everything comes from his side of the family. So I just, it's always been this big concern for me and I'm a, sh a sugar addict. You know, I was just constantly eating sugar and carbs and, knew that. So when I started researching all this and, and seeing all these people talking about reversing their diabetes and stuff, that was like, okay, I, I need to give this a shot. And then all those other medical problems that Dr. Barry would talk about getting rid of and helping, I was like, yeah, I need to, I need to give this a shot. So that is my biggest why. And then also, you know, trying to be healthy and show my kids this way of eating because, you know, they're too old for me to change their way of eating. I've already taught them to eat a sad diet, but I'm hoping 
that they will see this and see me getting healthier and healthier. And hopefully it will encourage them to change their ways. <laughs> I hope someday in the future. Good. Good. Yeah. And that's, that's really all we can do. You know, once, once your kids get to a certain age, you can't really, I mean, technically you could with your daughter cause she still lives in the house and she's a sophomore. So you could in theory, just stop buying all the stuff, but, but yeah, there's that big butt hanging out there. Kids at well, that age are going to push back. Well, and not only that, but I have a husband too that does not eat this way and he has all that stuff. How can I tell her she can't have it when he's having it? And then my adult son and he eats that stuff and he brings it home from his own paycheck. How can I tell her, no, you can't have it when he can't, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, I understand. I understand it, completely. If we were doing it as a family, it would be different, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's just impossible. Yeah. And one of the questions that I get quite often that I can't answer because I don't have a family that lives here in the house with me. So how do you go about dealing with keeping yourself carnivore or as you like to say, carnivore ish, because you do have a little bit of keto stuff here and there. Mm -hmm. How do you go about keeping yourself on track with all that stuff in the house? You know, it's been easier than I thought it would be. I thought it would be really hard, but um, I think part of it is that I have had to do so many different diets, not to lose weight, but for health reasons, for like stomach issues, because I've had digestive issues for 20 years now. And that was one of the, the things that drew me to this way of eating too, with, you know, with Dr. Barry talking about that. And I've tried dairy-free, gluten-free, uh, Oh, I've given up bread meat because that was bad and pork was bad. And, um, you know, I've, I've done everything. So throughout the last at least 10 years, I've had those kind of diets and I was always eating different stuff from them anyway. So it just became it's always been kind of more normal for me to eat differently than the rest of the house than me to eat with them, if that makes sense. Sure. Of course, that makes sense. Um, so it wouldn't actually be a, uh, a talk with you if we didn't talk about your other channel, your crafting channel, just a little bit here. So why don't you tell my viewers what that's all about? And, and you know, I saw you made a, a video on some kind of ribbon thing yesterday. <laughs> It's a ribbon braid. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, I started that channel about four and a half years ago, and I'm almost to 10K subscribers, which is exciting. I think I'll, I'll get there by the fall. My, that channel is kind of more um, seasonal because the main thing that I teach is, is something called Homecoming Moms, which is really big here in Texas, and it's a few other states or places uh, have adapted it too, but it's really big in Texas. And so that's the main thing that I teach. So during the fall, like end of summer through the fall is when that channel really explodes. So I think I'll get there by the end of summer, hopefully. But yeah, that's, and I teach other crafts too, Reese and, and all kinds of stuff. But yeah, that's my main channel that I've had going on for four and a half years, like I said. So it's exciting. I love it. It's what, well, I mean, here, I'm in my craft room. <laughs> This is my safe space. Excellent. So, uh, so the crafting um, is your, I guess, you know, everybody would always talk about side hustles and things that yes. doing on the side. So the crafting channel is one of your side hustles. I'm assuming from just from what I've seen of your schedule, are you working outside the home at all or are you no. basically a stay at home mom? Yeah. I've got an Etsy shop, so I make a little money off that, and then I make a little money off my YouTube channel, and that's it. But that really mostly goes into buying more stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've, I've, <laughs> I've seen the tour of your crafting room on a couple of different <laughs> videos. There's a lot of stuff there. Yeah, I keep mm -hmm. having to go up because I don't have any room. 
Yeah, and now there are a few things that I have seen on your channel that I wanted to ask you about specifically okay. because I want to know for myself and there may be some other viewers out there and, you know, I've seen what the opinions of bigger YouTubers are, but I want to know what your opinion is because you're one of the channels that I watch on a regular basis. And, you know, you've got those uh, silicone pans in. Mm -hmm. A few, oh, it's been several videos ago now, a few months ago for baking. The um, one where I, I couldn't get it undone. <laughs> yes, yes. You had quite a quite a struggle with that one. But um, what kind of temperature are those safe in the oven to? I don't remember. I need to look that up. Um, I want to say mostly when I use it in the oven, the only thing I've used it for is when I make that uh, protein sparing bread, which I don't make it very often. And I think that's at like 325 or something. So I don't know. I use it. I'll make like fat bombs and stuff sometimes with them. So they just go in the freezer. Okay. Cause I was curious, not because I have those ty types of pans, but my, my big cast iron skillet has those silicone handles on it. Oh, okay. And I've been taking those off to put it in the oven when I cook a roast at 350 and was just curious if you thought 350 would be okay with those I or think should I so. continue? Yeah, I would think like maybe not like broiling it or something, but I bet 350 to 400 is fine. Okay, that's that's an interesting thing. And um, well, I know it is because I have some of those um, silicone sheets and when i used to bake the kids cookies you know you bake them at 375 on those so okay well that's a good one um i saw your video that came out today and you had a little trouble getting the the relight blended up yes it, it takes a while i have found a trick for that if you would like to hear that oh really yeah what i do is in a in a glass that is safe to heat, I put about two or three ounces. Oh, my camera has gone out of focus here. Yeah. There we go. That's better. Let me slide up a little closer. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Um, but in, in the bottom of a glass, I'll put just a couple of ounces of hot water add the relight to the hot water, and then I have one of those. The only blender I have in the house is one of those stick emulsion blender things. Mm -hmm. I'll stick that down there and let that spin for a couple of minutes, oh, mixing okay. up in the hot water, and then get a big glass of cold water and dump that into that, and it mixes much easier that way. I'll have to try that. That's a good you idea. Might, you just, you just have to make sure you're putting your hot water in a glass that's big enough around for your stick blender to go in. Yeah. Because I had a I had a skinny glass I tried it in because I just eyeballed it and then realized mm -hmm. that the hood on my stick blender wouldn't quite fit in the cup. And I'm like, well, that didn't really accomplish a whole lot for me. That reminds me before I got one of those little milk frothers for my coffee mm -hmm. for the butter. And I tried... One of the, and coffee whip. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little too powerful for a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, and that's why you need to have, you know, you you make it in a tall, I have a tall, thin glass that I put the, the two ounces of water in at the bottom. Yeah. That way you've got some space for it to, to mix and not fly all over the place. Right, and I bet that little milk frother would work too. I bet it would too. Yes, indeed. So, um... I saw back a while ago on your channel that you got an element LMNT starter pack. Um, have you used those? Do you like those? Are you continuing to buy those? Or are you like most of us that have decided, well, those are really good, but we're going to have to go with a cheaper brand of electrolytes because I just can't afford that? Yeah, I went through them a lot faster than I thought I would. You know, I think I bought the four boxes in January or something like that. And I was like, oh, this is going to last me months. It lasted me like maybe two months. 
But, you know, I've dealt with a lot of allergies and sinus since about Christmas, and I have just been drinking electrolytes like crazy. I'll have a few days where I don't want them at all, and then all of a sudden I'm craving them again. So I just, I figure my body wants them if I'm craving them. But yeah, I have gone through them like crazy. I've gone through two, four packs of elements since the beginning of the year. And then I bought the Relight. And I'm really, really low on element, but I thought I'm going to get some Relight and <laughs> use that for a while before I order the element. Because it is expensive. It's really good, though. I really like it. Yeah, I got I got one of their starter kit, one of their starter packs once with just the like eight different flavors in it. Mm -hmm. And they were all really good. Just I cannot see my way clear to yeah to do those because you I suppose you could just dump a half a packet in a in a in a glass of water and save the other half packet, but yeah. I would I would probably end up spilling it, which is why I end up I use the Keto Chow Daily Minerals, the liquid. It mixes really easy, and I don't have to use the full amount. I have yeah, a, I do that too. I have an eyedropper, and I put about a half of what they recommend in my coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, one of the other things I want to go back to here real quick, because I'm reaching back in time on your channel here for this, but you made a pizza crust. You oh, made yourself yeah. a pizza where your half didn't have any sauce on it and your daughter's half did have sauce on it. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever revisited that? Have you ever made that again? Or did that end up just being a one-off and you decided it wasn't worth the effort? Or have you mm -hmm. just never gotten there? I think maybe I made it one more time now that I think about it. But that was it. You know, I found that I would just that I just prefer a pizza bowl if I'm craving pizza without any kind of crust better than one of these. I still haven't tried the, um, Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Everybody, everybody makes this dough. It's the one with the cheese in the dough. Um, mm -hmm. what is that called? I can't remember. I still have not tried that one, but honestly, I'm just like a little bit of sauce and then all those different toppings and bake it. I just prefer that. Okay, that is good. Now, um, I don't know because I found I found something interesting on my channel a couple of weeks ago, and wondering if you have had a similar experience. Because when I did that interview with uh, Dave, he had grabbed a shot of me out of my first video and put that on the screen in his intro and i didn't realize how different i looked have you gone back and looked at your early videos recently because you know having watched you all the way through because i see you basically not every day but on a regular mm -hmm. basis you don't really notice the yeah. changes but then i went back because i was doing some prep work for this interview i went back and watched some of your older videos and you can really see the difference in your face. I mean, it's not that you were severely overweight or anything then, but you had the little tired baggies under your eyes mm -hmm. and you're just, have you gone back and looked at those in a while to see the differences in yourself? Well, I haven't watched like the older videos on this channel, but I did was it a couple of months ago. I went, back on my crafting channel and looked at some of my old live streams and took some screenshots of those and then and just like went went back and then just kept doing screenshots as I got closer to now and then like a screenshot from that week whenever it was and you could tell a huge difference in my face like you said and just like my complexion it just looks just looks cleaner and I don't know. It, you could just tell. And then sometimes you can see me from like the waist up and you, it, there was definitely um, a difference in my body as well. And Excellent. it's not like I've lost a ton of weight or a ton of um, inches or anything, but you can tell like I've firmed up and slimmed down 
quite a bit. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, one of the other things I have to comment on out of one of your other videos, you had an LSU blanket hanging over the back of the couch. And I noticed uh, it looked like it may have just been a, a, a French fleur-de-lis, but those are recently, you know, normally associated with Louisiana. So who's the LSU fan in your house? Is that you or are you originally from Louisiana? My husband. He grew up in Louisiana and he's a huge LSU fan. So I became an LSU fan. Two of my kids are LSU fans. So we have tiger stuff all over the house. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, would, you would get along great with Pastor Watford, the pastor of the church that I go to down in oh, really? North Carolina when I'm down there because he's originally from Baton Rouge. Oh, wow. And he's a huge LSU fan. I mean, he even he even has a uh, an LSU tie that he wears to church on Sundays. Oh, I love it. Football <laughs> season. I love it. It's very funny. Um, <laughs> so one of the other things that I wanted to ask you about, because it's something that carnivores could make use of in when they go shopping and buy big big piles of meat. Because I've been thinking about one, because even using the really good Ziploc bags, I end up with some ice crystallization mm -hmm. on the meat that I've frozen. And I see that you have a vacuum sealer. Yes. Um, so what brand do you use? What's the cost of running it? And would you recommend that brand? Or have you seen others that you might like to try? That's a food saver. Um, and we've had that for years and we had a food saver before that, uh, that we had for several years. And before that I had some off brand that did not work well. So we've always stuck with food saver after that. Um, I want to say we've had that the whole time we've lived here and it's been like 11 years. So they last a long time. Every once in a while you'll get one that didn't seal properly and you'll get some air in. So I always double seal them still all of my bags just to try to help prevent that but we we used to buy partial cows and stuff when we lived in northwest arkansas but we don't really know we don't know anybody around here so we don't we don't even know where to go for something like that but you know i do buy a lot of meat on sale and stuff so i have to freeze it and i have i still have some stuff out there from last summer <laughs> And it's still good because I vacuum seal it. So, yeah, I definitely recommend getting some kind of vacuum sealer. And I'm pretty sure I got mine at Sam's Club, but you can get them on Amazon. I think you can buy them at Walmart. And they you said not. that was a, a food saver brand? Food saver, yeah. And I always buy the food saver bags, too. The bags or the rolls. Okay. Now you've been you've been doing because of your crafting channel you've been doing YouTube for quite some time now. You, you said four years or so. Mm -hmm. um, I see it a little bit in my channel, but most people that read my comments don't see them because I have a very tight blocked words list on my channel. Are you starting to see a lot of comments that are negative on your channel? just in general or specific to what you're doing? I saw it more when I was doing the daily shorts of what I eat in a day. You know, when I first started and for several months, I would just, I would video everything I ate and whew, I got some good views, but I would get a lot of hateful and negative comments on those. And that was one of the reasons why I stopped because it just got to be too much. And, okay. But on the videos, I, I rarely get anything negative on the videos. Okay, yeah. You, as, as Professor K has said on multiple occasions, if you're going to do YouTube, you have to have a thick skin. Yeah, you do. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, the shorts go out to a different audience. Yeah. Which is which is why I think that happens quite a bit. Um, so if 
there was somebody watching right now that has been on the fence or thinking about carnivore or is just now hearing about carnivore, what kind of advice would you give them? Do it. <laughs> Definitely. Um, the way I did it, was I did it very slowly. I eased into it. Um, that worked very well for me. I know some people jump in. I think you did, didn't you? Just like head first. But for me, easing into it worked really, really well. And I set a goal. Like I said, I set a goal for, for 90 days um, just from listening to Dr. Barry. And then I ended up going over 100 days full carnivore before doing some keto stuff. But I think I think I spent maybe two months, maybe even a little over two months cutting, slowly cutting sugar and carbs. And I just, every day it was like when I would decide to eat and I ate, I was one of those people that ate like every two or three hours because I was told that's what I was supposed to do with no gallbladder. And every time I would decide what to eat, do, do I need to add that syrup on there or do I have to have this on here too? Do I, do I need this bread? You know, I would just, I would ask myself when I was fixing me something to eat. And I also, I did not eat very much meat before. And when I did, it was mostly turkey, chicken, chicken breast, and um, turkey bacon, that kind of stuff. Very, very lean meats. So I had to ease in the red meat and bacon and stuff. And the eggs, because I thought eggs were bad too. So I just eased into all of that until one day I was just full carnivore. And I didn't set a date where I, I, on this day I'm going to be full carnivore. I slowly eased into it until it just happened naturally. And that's what, I mean, that worked very, very well for me. But I would say give it some time and don't just do like a month. I mean, if that's all you've got, if, if that's all you can commit to, okay. But 90 days for me was really, really good. And I had that goal and I'm like, okay, at the end of that 90 days, I'll see where I'm at and see if it's helping me. And then I'll decide what I want to do after that. So definitely, I mean, if you're on the fence about it, just do it. Just try it. What do you have to lose? That's some really good advice. I did not realize that you did not have a gallbladder. So let's talk about that for just a second. Have you had... Did you have any trouble or are you having any trouble with the amounts of fats that you eat? Did you have to ease into that as well or? I think easing into it, um, easing on to carnivore and easing those fatty meats, I think that probably did me a great deal of good when it comes to gallbladder. Because like I said, I was eating, wasn't eating much meat at all and it was all very lean meat eating a lot of potatoes because I was told to eat a lot of potatoes. So I think easing out of that stuff and easing onto the foods that I eat now really did me a favor. Good. Especially since I'm only like two years out. I was only like a year and a half out of the gallbladder surgery too. Yeah, because those that have watched Dr. Barry's channel have heard him say multiple times that without a gallbladder, you're bile ducts in your liver will expand and store not as much as what's in the gallbladder, but you will get some storage. And now I know somebody who is living proof of the fact that you can actually make the switch to carnivore and not have a problem with that. And as, as you talked about, I, yes, I did jump straight into carnivore. I was standard American diet one day and carnivore the next. And I don't actually recommend that for anybody, unless you're like me, you retire and you have nothing better to do with the next two weeks than hang out within a few steps of the bathroom, because that is going to happen. Yeah, that still happened for me too, but it wasn't like, oh, really, really bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your body just has to adjust to all that. Yeah, so... You obviously, you get a little bit of exercise with uh, taking care of chickens. And I've seen you do some walking challenges. Yes. What, what kinds of exercise have you been doing on top of that, or is that pretty much it for you? 
walking is my big thing. I've started jogging again and I, I've been jogging almost every day. It may only be 10 minutes. The max right now is 20 minutes. I'm, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to hurt myself. So I'm just easing into it and then hopefully do more. Um, but, you know, I'll give myself a break a couple of days a week. And then I do a little bit of stretching and yoga, mostly for like my back and stuff, because I've been doing that for years to help with that. So that's not really for exercise. It's just more for my muscles and back relief, back pain relief and stuff like that. I've got a, some two pound weights and I try to do those a couple of times a week too, but I forget. I, I'm still not in the habit of using those. I understand. It takes, it takes time and... Um, as coach Bronson says, you know, you have to make time for the, whatever movement you're going to do and make that time non-negotiable. He was talking, it was very, I found it very funny. One of the clients that he was working with, he's like, look, I don't care if you actually do anything or not, but you need to set up a time and go to the gym. You don't have to go inside, but if you've allotted this half hour for your exercise program, drive to the gym and just sit in the parking lot if that's all you're going to do. And once you and apparently she did that and she just sat in the parking lot for a week and it's like, well, I'm here. So she started to get out of the car and do stretches. She still didn't go inside. She did that for a couple of weeks. And then finally, she's like, well, you know, I'm here. I might as well go inside and see if I can't find something I like to do. And now he says that she's just, she's in there all the time. And wow. as you know, well, you may not know, but from, from me watching both coach Bronson and professor K with your jogging, once you feel stable enough that you know, you don't want to push too hard so that you fall down and hurt yourself. But according to them, the best way to do running, rather than jogging for a half hour, 45 minutes, working up to that, they suggest that you pick a spot and do a 45 second to a minute sprint as hard as you can, rest for two or three minutes, and then do it again. And then you're done. And they said that you will see much better results in the long run from that than you will from this constant pounding on your joints from jogging. The walking I do, I, I think walking is great. Um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously, if, if I've been walking as far as I've been walking, I haven't been getting as many steps in since I got home because yeah. it's been cold and windy here since I got home. But it is. I'm looking forward to going out this afternoon because it is currently 74 degrees here in Omaha, Nebraska. and 73 the, here. <laughs> and the wind is out of the south today because people, someone was giving me a hard time about it, but people that don't, ha, don't live here or have never been to the northern plain states, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, they just don't understand when you get that north wind coming down out of Canada even if the thermometer says 65 degrees, if you've got a 20 to 25 mile an hour wind coming out of the north, it's cold outside. I bet. And that's the other thing that I find amusing. People that are complaining that, oh, it's really windy out today. Is you've got 15 degree constant wind gusts from 20 to 25. And I'm like, 20 to 25 mile an hour gusts? We call that Tuesday in Nebraska. Because <laughs> it's always always windy here um let me take a quick look at my note sheet here oh yes yes i don't know how i missed it but you had a birthday what was that yeah. two weeks ago now or last week uh it was in march <laughs> look at me oh, having to think march? about it it was in march okay so i've so i missed it by a whole month and then some well i'm a i'm, I'm blind, a bad friend though. It feels like it was a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now you are 49. Was 49. That yep. 49. So you're one, one year away. You are now in the power slide, the big five. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's not bad though. I mean, 
No. I still I still think, you know, at you at 49, I'm fairly sure I have a couple of t-shirts in the back of the closet that are older than you are. <laughs> you know, I used to I used to say that as a joke because you know I've worked for Dave at the miniature golf course for decades. And as a joke, when you know I'd be talking to some of the younger kids that were working for us, it's like, you know, you really need to listen to what Dave and I are trying to tell you because we both have socks that are older than you are. <laughs> and I was saying it as a joke until one day I realized mm, that that's you did. probably true. I probably do have <laughs> socks that are older than they are. Oh, no. <laughs> uh-huh. So before I let you go, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Something you want to tell the people of my channel and your channels that are watching? What is there to know about Hyla that you would like them to know? Oh, goodness. I don't know. You put me on the spot. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I just, um, you know, I'm just a regular person sharing my journey on this diet, and I'm not perfect. Just like Sana will say, I'm imperfectly perfect. But, um, yeah, I, I make mistakes, and I still have vices that I'm, that I need on this diet. You know, sometimes it's a carbonated drink or a coffee or uh, some keto friendly chocolate or something. I have a lot of vices still. And I never drank coffee before, which is funny that now I want it. But yeah, I mean, I'm just trying, trying to do the best I can and get healthier and healthier and hopefully I'll get there. But I am not perfect and don't claim to be and just trying and I'm just enjoying this community. I think it's, it's a really great community and we learn from each other. And I don't think I could do this without this community since I'm by myself doing this by myself in this house. And it's not that they give me a hard time or anything. It's just, it can be difficult if, if you're doing it by yourself and you don't have that support. So this community is just everything when you're doing, when you decide to do this way of eating, if you don't have that support at home, even if you do, I think you need the community too. Yeah, absolutely. And this, this community is great. And you said you're a regular person and that's other than, you know, the really big guys, but even Dr. Barry, his channel, he's a regular person. Mm -hmm. I think I was drawn to him to his hillbilly redneck ways a lot easier because you know i grew up in that area of the country as well oh yeah you know i i grew up in appalachia so i uh i related to him right off the bat but there are so many people out there now you can tell there's a lot of people out there that are in this space that are literally just in it for the the money mm -hmm. i don't understand how they're in it for the money because i haven't figured out how to actually make what I would call make money from YouTube. I, I mean, if you, if you look at the hours invested, I know because, in, because I put out videos pretty much every day. I know. Yeah. Um, it, it, you know, I would, I would do much, much better going to get a part-time job at McDonald's if I really needed the money, but exactly. there, are, there are so many regular people out there in this space that truly just want to help people. Yeah. And that's 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 one of the big things mm -hmm. that I think draw people to certain channels and push them away from other channels. Yeah. Um, so tell everybody that's watching now where they can find you. Uh, obviously, underneath your name there in the screen is the Crafty and Carnivorous. And I, of course, will put that down in the description so people can find you easier. Okay. But do you have any other places on social media where you do things? Just Pinterest. I do YouTube and Pinterest. That's it. I don't do much social media. Sometimes I okay. think about doing something else, but <laughs> YouTube is enough work as it is. I don't see I... how so many people do Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and <laughs> on top of YouTube. I don't know how y'all do it or those that do, but yeah. You can find me on my two channels on YouTube and then on Pinterest. Okay. And then I have, and, a, I have an email 
in listed in my descriptions too if people want to email me okay and you do have uh so pinterest i is it will i find a link to your pinterest on your videos down below yes yes okay so i'll find that and link that up but thanks for being with us today crafty don't run off um I do appreciate you being here. Um, for those of you that have been enjoying this today, don't forget to say thank you to Hyla for her time down in the comments of this video. Remember, folks, get out there. Be 1% better today, tomorrow, every day. Have a great day, folks. I'll see you in the next one.